What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. As you can guess by the title of this video, we are jumping into Marie Kondo decluttering part two. And I, four, two. <laughs> if you've seen my last video, you know how successful we were at getting rid of, I would say a good 50% of the clothes that I own. And my wardrobe is feeling fresh, clean and I love every piece that's in it and believe me that made me so incredibly happy that I am absolutely buzzed to jump into this part two phase which is a little bit more detailed but I am determined to jump into it head first today and really make some good progress. Before we go any further everybody if you like this video at any point please don't forget to hit that big thumbs up button it really supports my channel. Please don't forget to hit subscribe and that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. So after you are finished decluttering your clothes, Marie sets out a number of categories that you need to tackle in order. And the reason she does this is that it goes from easier to harder. So there are a number of little subcategories and pieces to this, all designed to make sure that you are getting maximum benefit from deciding what you're going to keep and what you're going to discard. So lucky for me, I actually jumped into doing books last week when I'd done my clothing declutter. I literally moved the following day into the books and I managed to get rid of about half my book collection. So now when I pick up a book off the shelf, it's one that I'm almost certain I'm going to read again or that really brings me joy or has a memory attached to it. So the next step is papers and Marie's rule of thumb for papers is to discard them all. Just get rid of them all with the exception of three categories. Currently in use, needed for a limited period of time and then needed indefinitely. So that would be things like contracts or the deeds to your house which thankfully I don't have. <laughs> I'm just going to read from her book so you know exactly what papers are. So the term papers does not include papers with sentimental values. It also includes newspapers, junk mail, that kind of stuff. Stuff that does not spark joy when you hold it and doesn't serve a purpose and that's where the other categories come in if you organize into the three categories then you can actually make some progress as regards what's important in your life what papers are important and what you need to deal with I'm quite lucky in the sense that all of my papers are online all of my bills come in through email or through an app and that is a fantastic way also to save the environment everybody so if you could go online to your billing providers and make sure that you are opting for an e-statement that would make a massive environmental impact and just a small thing that you can do today just wanted to throw that into this video so once we move on from papers, we're onto the kimono category, which is the miscellaneous items category. We all have it. We all have those drawers, and in my case, several drawers, where we just throw things that we have no use for, we've no purpose for, and we don't know why we're really hanging on to them anymore. We just kind of do. I suppose as I was doing my clothing clear out, I found things in drawers that were just hanging around and I had no idea how they even got there, so I just threw them on my desk. But anyway, let's jump into it and waste no more time. I actually didn't think that I had documents that I needed to permanently file, but I definitely did. And so I popped them in here so I know exactly where I need to go for absolutely everything that could be of vital importance. This is my memory box pile, which I literally just need to pop into my memory box. There are things that I absolutely love and I would never get rid of. This is the cupcake box that I got when myself and Danny visited Vancouver. And we went to see the Cupcake Girls store, which was a series on television that I was absolutely obsessed with. I got a vegan cupcake and I'll never forget it. And I absolutely love holding on to this and reminiscing on that time that we spent in Vancouver. So that's something that I would never get rid of, although it's kind of class the paper. I've been finding a lot of pictures in random places like in the spines of books and buried in drawers. I've just been gathering them in the one place because I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. Obviously they need to be put in albums. We don't have the original negatives for any of these pictures anymore so it's really valuable to have them in hard copy. So I'm actually going to take a picture of each one when I'm finished so I have a picture of a picture but it means that if anything ever happens and it goes missing I would still have a copy of that picture. So now it's time for a cup of coffee and we are moving on to kimono. With cosmetic products, a really useful thing to know actually is that if you look at the bottom of your cosmetic, you will often see a number and it would be like 12M, 24M, even 6M. And that means the amount of months after which it should be thrown away. So you shouldn't actually hold on to any cosmetics, even if you love them after that period, because it could mean that there has been a multiplication of bacteria, that it's old and that you should not be using it for your own safety. So out of everything that I had left, I managed to narrow it down to this one box here. All of these products are products that are going to be used in the next couple of weeks to months. And as part of my zero waste journey then, I will be finding alternatives to them. The downside is there is a huge amount of waste 
from the cosmetic side of things because they're not things that can be used by other people unfortunately so that is making me a little bit sad but also at the same time I'm really happy that I've learned from this and also as part of my zero waste journey I'm not planning on accumulating any more stuff that I don't want that I'm gonna have to pop into the bin that is a whole story for another video but just if people are following my zero waste journey that is the situation with these products so next on Marie's kimono list is accessories valuables electrical equipment anything that seems vaguely electrical i have a lot of kind of random wires and stuff that has stuck in drawers and one more thing i should say is that i have a ton of stuff lying around behind me there's a lot of stuff on my bed that's okay so marie does not say that you need to tidy as you go you basically discard everything and then you tidy obviously my clothes are the exception i kind of needed to put that away so that i could see everything else overall generally you're not trying to find a place for something until everything is gone and then naturally everything should fingers crossed slot into space when i know what space i have to work with household equipment stationery and writing material sewing kits etc of which i have too many especially with college you find that over the years you just accumulate like writing pads half used and stuff you even saw me gathering them when i was doing papers i just have so many writing pads but i find that they come in really, really handy when i am doing exams so i'm going to hold on to any writing pad that i do find and pop them in with all my academic books that i organize My bed is looking a little bit cray cray. So over here, I have all my stationery that I just organized. Uh, literally, that's like not even scratching the surface. So I feel like I'll have to do a major clear out of that, but at least it's all in one place now where I can access it easily. This is the basket that I'm using to throw all the pictures that I find, random photos that have been lying around the house. Those are just my electricals that will need to find a home when everything else is discarded. This is my box to donate. And look, these have been sitting in my room for years. Somebody tell me that that isn't Jerry Halliwell. Welcome back everybody. If you're still here, you're doing really well and I thank you for continuing to go along this journey with me because believe me, it is a long process and if you do engage in a comrade clutter, it's gonna take a while. Today is part two of day two of kimono and I feel like today we can get this stuff done. But once we finish comrade, that is not the end of the story. I'm actually going to be doing a complete room refurbishment. I'm planning on getting a new bed, doing some painting, getting some new decor in and kind of revamping my space a little bit to suit my personality now it's really tough emotionally to allow yourself to move on from that era of your life and update your space but I feel like if you don't you stay trapped in that phase for too long and there's so much I want to achieve and I feel like updating my space is going to help me to do that even more so what I do today is I will crack on and get all of this tidied and I will show you some before and afters and talk you through how I feel at the end wish me luck <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one out there who absolutely loves to clean. It's kind of an effort to think about doing it, but once you're in the swing of things, it's really therapeutic and really enjoyable. And when you see that dirt just sliding away, it's like, it's very satisfying. I'm wrecked, but I can't believe I am actually finished this Comrie declutter. It's taken me four days, four full days of non-stop tidying and discarding to get to this stage. So I'm gonna pop in some before and afters now and show you exactly what the room looks like in this moment, which is so exciting. It looks like a different room. It feels like a different room. It feels lighter, brighter, airier. I feel less of a weight on me. It's incredible what i love most about this process and the room that i have now is the fact that everything in it is something that i love i genuinely have an attachment to it it's clean it's tidy it's clutter free i can see where everything is i know where everything is it is a pretty ruthless method don't get me wrong marie kondo takes no prisoners and i think that a ruthless approach is kind of the only way to go about it because you can spend your life tidying up as marie says but you will never actually truly deep clutter and get your space in order unless you go through a process like this. I really hope that you get some inspiration from it and you might even want to try it and do it yourself. Again, as I mentioned in my last video, the book is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up and it's available on Amazon and in all good bookstores. It is challenging, it is tiring, but it is worth it. So thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my videos and I look forward to seeing you back on my channel again. Bye.